rejection of uh, Pope Paul VI landmark and I would say prophetic encyclical Humanae Vitae has everything to do with everything that you're seeing now the meltdown of Western civilization uh, abortion uh, has become a, a form of contraception and Paul VI, Pope Paul VI warned about that um, and so at the root of much of this is uh, is that rejection that was a, uh, a magnificent uh, encyclical and uh, it was rejected in many quarters even inside the Catholic Church I'll never forget one time when I preached um, at a conference in Winnipeg and uh, there was a bishop there I, I went through um, unbelievable things just getting to the conference and I arrived I was in the conference room with the bishop and I said I can't believe what I went through to get here well he said you know where you are don't you I said yeah Winnipeg and he said yeah well do you understand the significance of that and I said no I must have missed that he said the Winnipeg statement and it, he reminded me that he was one of the bishops in the Canadian Episcopal Conference about 98 percent of them wrote they put it in writing they rejected Pope Paul the sixth teaching on Humanae Vitae uh, that brings down such darkness and hell on humanity that it's hard to believe the politicians will never get that many people in the church don't even get that but I personally believe that the rejection of Humanae Vitae was a was pivotal and it has a great deal to do with the rise of, of, of abortion and all the evils uh, that flow from that evil uh, the, the, uh, the the basic decomposition of my beloved country and yours and the whole Western world is tied into this so that's a, that question is more astute than, than the lady might even know one of the things too though to, to help understand that is oftentimes the bishops then were in t and priests were intimidated against saying anything about it do you remember the shibboleth or the battle cry was keep the pope out of my bedroom oh, he yes. has oh, yeah. remember that yeah. oh, absolutely. To which my response is he has you flatter yourself he has no interest in being there <laughs> what he wants is God to be there and this is something that's very important to keep in mind, but people were afraid to speak up about that. They were. And, you know, I sympathize with anybody's dilemma who's in authority, whether the authority is ecclesiastical, church authority, or civil authority. But I only sympathize with it to a point, to a point. Uh, you know, my friends in the military have a saying that certain people who aren't performing the mission and, and doing a very good job, they're oxygen thieves. <laughs> oxygen thieves. They're breathing perfectly good air that someone who's performing the mission could be breathing. I'm sympathetic to the difficulties of leadership, but only to a point. Uh, if you don't have a backbone, you can't stand up straight. And if you can't stand up, you're apt to fall for anything. Uh, the failure in leadership and uh, you know fear okay you know either hey the general was fearful to make a frontal assault on a heavily fortified position look hey I'd be fearful too but I'm doing it I, I sympathize with their dilemma but only so much with the bishop actually years ago on that subject he saw it coming then he thought it was really not a good idea I know what they were doing they, the bishops have tried to make the burden in quotation marks the burden on the faithful as manageable as possible and that's why they abrogated certain things and, and they lessened requirements here and there listen uh, one of my favorite lines from the catechism of the Catholic Church was is qu quoting another church document is the history of human existence is the story of dour combat with the forces of evil uh, if we are engaged in dour combat with the forces of evil then uh, as St. Paul said let's not shadow box 
you know, let's fight like we mean it. You know, we're engaged in a fight for our life. Souls are at stake. Um, I, I, I have great difficulty uh, with anything less than very forceful action at this point. Um, penance, yes. Do I think, uh, but I, I, I'll tell you this, I think there should be some leadership in that, but uh, people, uh, hopefully, a lot of good Catholics, they'll do it, but don't wait for the bishops to mandate penance. Uh, there is nothing stopping you. And I'll tell you this, every single one of us has a unique, precious, unrepeatable place on the battle line. Uh, don't fail in the mission at this point. You better pray like your children's lives depend on. You better do penance. You know, penance and sacrifice have been relegated to the realm of the almost non-existent today. We have very little preaching on the cross today. Um, it, that was the topic of my doctoral thesis in dogmatic theology, um, the uh, meaning of, of suffering uh, to the Christian. It was from John Paul's apostolic letter, Salvifici Dolores, and uh, it's enormously important. Penance and sacrifice, even outright suffering. Uh, if you have cancer, if you are suffering from anything, uh, my favorite line from my doctoral thesis is to be Placed on the cross in Christ, to be lifted up on the cross in Christ, is to be set at the pinnacle of human possibilities. Don't wait for the bishops. You pray. You do penance. Offer, like my grandma used to say in the old days, it was a common refrain, offer it up. Right? You know, offer it up. You have arthritis. I know, it, it hurts. If you're losing your hearing, mine's gone, your eyesight. You, you, ha you have an illness, whatever it is, don't waste it. It's precious. Offer it up. Unite it to Jesus for the salvation of souls. That's what's going to turn the world around, nothing else. And meanwhile, the people in the world are saying that it is meaningless, it's useless. Let us help you die. We'll help kill you. And this is what, that's their answer, yes. that they befriend death and we befriend the one who conquered death. Absolutely. That marks the absolute difference between us. Yes, yeah. The, the leadership of the church has to galvanize. You know, I, I've heard that as little as 20% of Catholics in North America go to Mass regularly. It's less than that in Europe. Uh, so that means 80% aren't going even to Mass. That's a precept. That's the bare bones beginning. If you're going to live in a state of grace, you at least have to follow the precepts of the church. How can we bring them to the church? How can we bring them back? They asked me that about vocations. Well, how can we bring them in? <clears throat> you be the best. Like the Army commercial says, be all you can be. They stole that from God. <laughs> Jesus said, you must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. One person at a time. You living your Catholic Christian life with holiness, striving for perfection, you will be amazed the people you will attract and the strength of those people, the, the vibrancy of their faith. Uh, they, and then don't sit on your backside. Complacency is the kiss of death. Uh, when, when we've got enough strong Catholics uh, standing up, and you better believe your, your life depends on it. Because you're going to blink your eye and wake up a slave soon if enough of us don't get galvanized into action. It's a function of leadership. It's like in a war, a battle. You know, if the, if the general has the idea that it's not important to train or it's not important to educate and inspire his men, he's going to lose. Exactly. Same with us. One, one element of that that you, this goes back to what you had said earlier, that uh, we don't preach the cross enough. In fact, one part of the, I, I just noticed this, uh, or put these things together uh, a few months ago. Back in the 70s and even in the 60s, they took out the crucifixes from so many of our churches, and it wasn't long before the tabernacle followed. You, you remove Christ, Crucified, you remove Christ present in the sacrament, and then what do you have left is us. Yeah. 
And, and that's not good enough. No, no. And, and, and many of you may remember Archbishop Fulton Sheen's comment on that. It was toward the end of his life. And it says when, 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 we, when we remove Christ from the cross, uh, a, a cross without Christ, that's little more than they have in the oppressed communist countries. Right. They have right. plenty of suffering and plenty of misery. But when you put Christ on the cross, you, en you endow it with the power of redemptive love. Uh, as we've expunged the sacrifice from the daily life of, of Catholics and Christians, we've expunged power.